in the biggest fight of his life under the stress of the circumstances in his hometown of Detroit. His brother Henry involved in a murder charges involving a young woman killed there on Saturday night, and you have to wonder about the possible emotional effect of that. Now, as we watch him come in, Marvin, I'd also like to have you comment on his last fight. A lot of concern about whether his legs are going to hold up, which uh, he had some problems with against James Kitchen. No, I don't believe so. I think on a Kitchen fight, I still believe that he has some. I still believe he has some. It was a great fight, but I still believe he has some. Well, Sugar Ray Leonard has talked about the chin and legs of Thomas Hearns. And has been somewhat uh, deprecating about them, if you will. But Tommy Hearns, uh, many people, uh, myself included, feels that at this weight is just about where he is at his most effective. And Tommy Hearns, who weighed in at 162 and a half, not concerned at all about whether or not uh, he made it for the money or whether uh, he should have come in at the higher weight, he feels comfortable. Now, Sugar Ray Leonard, on the other hand, Gil, just to go back to uh, uh, Ray's weight, at 160 pounds, I think some people may still feel, even though he beat a light heavyweight in Donnie Lalonde, that maybe he's not a true middleweight. Is this uh, the most comfortable weight he could be at? Well, I think so. I think Ray's weight is absolutely good. Look at the way he's pumped up there. It looks like he's got a bicycle pump underneath, pumping up those shoulders. Now, that's uh, an interesting striped outfit he's got for the occasion here. A new look for Sugar Ray Leonard, always sartorially splendid, making his way to the ring. And today at the weigh-in, he uh, wore a specially designed T-shirt that said Free South Africa as he uh, is making his own statement this morning about conditions over there. Sugar Ray Leonard has been very calm, very relaxed. He's been out watching his brother Roger play tennis much of the week before and after workouts, and certainly he's been a very confident fighter. One thing that will be interesting to see is how the crowd responds. I know, Gil Clancy, you thought that maybe the majority of this crowd tonight will be for Tommy Hearn. Why so? Well, I just think he's the underdog. He's been on a quest for so long, and Ray's been on such a high roll. People tend to root for the underdog. And, of course, uh, even during the promotion, uh, while, while it was hype, you had a sense that uh, Sugar Ray Leonard perhaps treating Tommy Hearns a little arrogantly, and I don't think Tommy's taken too kindly to some of the things that he said. But Marvin Hagler, does it matter much what your opponent has been saying publicly coming into a big fight? Oh, I never hear him anyway. <laughs> doesn't make no difference. Let's get it on. Well, I'm sure. say to me, Tom, we're going to pay for it when I get in there. I'm sure that's what Tommy Hearns has felt, too. And there you see a very determined Sugar Ray Leonard. And I suppose if you were measuring on an applause meter that to this point, as he steps between the ropes, that Tommy Hearns has had perhaps a little bigger response. But now here they come, the Sugar Ray Leonard fan. See the back of that row. And it says Amanla, and that is freedom. And an African dialect, and certainly, uh, again, the follow-up to his uh, his uh, his statement this morning with his uh, T-shirt, and uh, this is in tribute to Nelson Mandela, who is uh, still in prison in South Africa, and uh, Ray has been uh, learning a lot about those conditions recently, and so there he is now, uh, marking the 25th anniversary in prison of Nelson Mandela in South Africa. 35 and 1. The only loss to the man we showed you earlier, Roberto Duran, who's here doing the telecast on the Spanish language simulcast of tonight's big fight. 33 years of age. Last month, Sugar Ray Leonard. Thomas Hearns, 30 years of age. And as it comes as no surprise, he's still taller than Tommy he was eight years ago. And coming in at 162 and a half. Now that reach and that jab, Gil Clancy, were a big factor in the early going in fight number one. Do you expect him to try and start out the same way tonight, or will he follow the accepted gospel that because maybe a questionable legs, he's going to go right after Ray? No, I, I think that the, the last fight, Ray Leonard was bouncing around side to side, giving Tommy Hearns plenty of room to use that jab. I think this time, I think Tommy's going to come out like a warrior, and I think Ray's going to try to get inside and make a war out of it. I think a, a lot of excitement, really. Well, in the average jabs per round, you can see uh, things have changed for uh, Hearns uh, quite significantly. Against Leonard One, he, he threw 29, landed 14. He threw more in his last fight against James Kinchin, but landed fewer of them. So perhaps not quite the effective weapon that it has been earlier in his career. Well, tonight, under the WBC rules, three judges will score the fight on the 10-point must system. 
No standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. That means the referee has discretion if there are more than three. And the fighter can be saved by the bell on the 12th and final round only. And now let's go up to our ring announcer for the introductions and the anthems, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please rise as the current headliners here at Caesars Palace, the fabulous Pointer Sisters, sing our national anthem. Richard Steele, the referee, 
as usual, very concise self, and we're ready to go. The war, Leonard Hearns, two. Thomas Hearns, 162 and a half. Ray Leonard at 160, scheduled for 12. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, marvelous Marvin Hangler at ringside. And the historic boxing match about to begin. Leonard in the striped red and white trunks, waiting for Hearns in the middle of the ring in gold. And you know, Tim Leonard seems strangely subdued uh, all during the introductions. Very quiet, not bouncing around too much. First punch of the fight, a flicking jab blocked by Leonard. And Leonard is starting this fight the same way he did the first fight, side to side, moving around, which is a surprise to me. Early chanting of Tommy from the Hearns fans, and I would say so far an even split in fan affection from what we can hear. I like the way how they're starting off now, being very cautious, both of them. Any surprise in that, Mark? No, no surprise at all, but I think Leonard wants to end this fight very early. Both of them, really. I can, you can expect anything in this fight. Leonard trying to jab up through that defense of the longer arm turns. I don't understand <clears throat> how come Tommy's not shooting that right hand when Leonard's laying down there like that. You know, Mark, I don't like that dragging jab when Leonard throws that jab to the body either. Well, he's got something he's up with his sleeve, bro. Good defense by Leonard on the right hand from Hearns. He blocked it. These are not the same two athletes, obviously, of eight years ago, but they're as determined, as competitive, and they have a lot of great action they've provided in the intervening years. Just about 20 pounds heavier than they were eight years ago. A wild swinging left from the taller Hearns, ducking under it. Right hand scored by Leonard. And Hearns says, yeah, you got me, no problem. It could develop into a problem. Hearns can be hit with right hands. Hearns seems a little tight. You know, Emmanuel Stewart says that's going to be the key. Tommy can take Leonard's punch and come back. The looping overhand right by Leonard, you just saw, something he's been working on in training. Final seconds of round one. Eight years later at Caesars Palace, a long-awaited rematch. Most thought would never happen, and we're underway. Not as fast as long. Mm -hmm. You understand? Not as fast as long. Look a little. Okay, look at me. Keep looking. Start pumping his hands a little bit more now, okay? Because you're breaking up his long tackles. Everything. Set him up. Beautiful. You heard Manny you Stewart. Everything you can do in that round, just about you can do. You saw it. You know when keep moving. He's going to go for every point you make. But I've got to have that one, two at him. All right? See if we can do it off a double stick. That's Pepe Correa has replaced Angelo Dundee in the corner of Sugar Ray Leonard. Dundee giving great credit for his work in the first fight. And Leonard was behind on the cards, rallying him, saying, you're blowing it, kid. You're blowing it, son. Good luck. And Leonard rallied to score the 14th round knockout. And you know, they're fighting in 90 degree heat, and Andy Stewart was fanning Tommy with a towel, which is not a bad idea. Temperature has dropped to a cool 90 degrees compared to more than 120. Evening began at 6 p.m. Pacific time in Las Vegas. Round two, scheduled for 12. You know, I'm surprised to see Leonard moving around the way he is, Tim, because in the first fight, he gave away the first five rounds with just exactly those tactics, and then he settled down, and he did much better when he fought Flatford. That's the way I thought they'd fight the fight. Well, we scored round one on our card for Hearns. Well, you know what's interesting in this fight? You know, both of them go down now, so that's what everybody's waiting for. It's no secret no more. 
both have been down indeed. Turner suffering knockout defeat at the hands of Iran Barkley and Marlon Hagler, of course. Knocked down by James Kinchin in his last outing before coming on to victory late. Very close call. Leonard knocked down by Donnie Lalonde before stopping him in his last outing. Well, starting off, you can see they look, both of them look very slow. No hand speed like they used to have. One of the bigger men, Marvin. And you can see Leonard throwing big power to the body. There's a right to the body from Leonard. That's where he got hers at in the first fight, was to the body. Right hand try by Hearns, high over the shoulder of Leonard. Leonard's waiting for him to try it again with the right hand so he can counter. They look like two fencers at this point in round two. Waiting to see the other thrust and then make their own parry back. Right hand just short from Hearns. Had the opening, but Leonard pulled his head back. Well, they've got Leonard's attention, Tim. First time I see someone push somebody off the ring and tell them, and tell them good luck. Short again from Hearns on the last right hand. Leonard you know, missing with a wild left. You know, Leonard is depending on his punching about Powerton. He's been training that way to hurt guys with every punch. You can see he don't need that hand speed that he had years before. Looking to bomb you with one punch at a time, which is not the usual Ray Leonard. He gets caught now with that type of tactics. Turn smiling confidently as again Leonard's short. Then he's having trouble getting by that left hand of Tommy Hearns. He's trying to suck the Tommy in so he can throw the right hand. The left scored by Leonard. His best punch of the fight thus far. Final seconds, round two. You can see Leonard trying to use all kinds of sight. Now, that was Leonard switching to southpaw, and he got tagged by Tommy Hearns. Now that's something that we saw in training and Ray made light of it, said he was just doing it for fun. But he showed it to Hearns and Hearns unloaded on him, Gil. Yeah, he sure did. Hit him with a nice straight right hand. I was not going to go to governor jab and put a hard right hand behind it. But finish on that left hook. He's there for your right hand left hook. Let's go with it. Every time you make a little freeze move, he's freezing. Now throw that, throw that one through him when you do that. But finish with that left hook. All right, we're looking fine. Get them shoulders moving more. Yeah. Don't stay stationary in front. It doesn't look like that many punches been thrown. Doesn't seem that way to me either. They have Leonard landing more punches than Hearns. I, didn't, I thought it was the other way around. Well, that's the way we've scored it now. Two rounds on our card for Thomas Hearns. Between Gil Clancy and me, do you agree, Marvin? Well, Leonard's trying to intimidate Tommy. He's trying to make him do things that you know, make him mad out there. Make him come get a little harder with his punches. We're going to jam. Concentrate. If he's nice and loose and just flicker it, he'd be a lot better. And here, Emmanuel Stewart saying to Tommy Hearns, just keep working that jab. Jose Pepe Correa, a very live character in the corner of Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, quite a contrast from 1981 and the experienced Angelo Dundee. Correa worked briefly with IBF welterweight champion Simon Brown, left hand, and is now with Leonard. Round three scheduled for 12. Tim Ryan, marvelous Marvin Hagler, and Bill Clancy. Turns got a left hand through. Every time Ray starts to make any kind of a move at all, Tommy pops that left hand up. He's keeping Leonard right at the range he wants him in, right at his moment. You kind of wonder, looking at Ray right now, why would he want this fight anyway? Well, I think you answered that question there before the fight, Marvin. You, you think that he needs to somehow redeem himself from the, the way you judged his uh, performance over you. Exactly, but you know what's happening, though. He's got a better fighter here. He don't have a guy like a Donnie Galan in there. He's got a real champion in there. And also, Ray doesn't agree with your thinking about his victory over you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's great. Hearns jabbing effectively. Emmanuel Stewart, his manager and trainer, said that uh, he would do this and expected that as the fight went on, Gill, it would work in his favor, that he would be the stronger man in the later round. Well, he, again, he's popping and scoring points, Tim. A little right. short, a little short with it. Did land it, but Leonard picked it up. 
But you see, when you throw a punch like that, Tim, it keeps the other guy and intimidates him a little bit. Keeps him from coming in. See, Leonard knows right now he's a little confident that Tommy don't have no chin, and I think that's what he's, get, he's aiming for. Well, he may be aiming for a big right hand. Right to the jaw of Leonard. Leonard took it, but it was a big shot. And another one sent him down. Right hand to the ear of Leonard. It was the short right hand that staggered Leonard that really hurt him, although he tried to show that it didn't, but it did. Hearns bangs the hook to the body. The right to the body. The crowd roaring here at Caesars Palace. The right to the chest from Hearns. Leonard looks very unsteady to me, trying to gather himself, not punching. you got to stay on top of Leonard right now. That's what Hearns has to go. I think Tommy's he, taking a little too much time. Too right much time. Too much Land to the left to the to get back ball. off. Short for the right hand. Tommy can't get careless in there because he's trying to be slick. He's bluffing right now. Tommy shouldn't let him relax so much like this. Overhand right, missed by Leonard. Right back from Hearns, not much on it. Again, Leonard is trying to punch too hard, Tim. Right hand. Timing is not there. Landed by Hearns, right to the body, back from Leonard. In the round three. Give some water. Go in there. Go down, Jake. Yeah. Gotta move the top of your body no more. That's all I'm looking for. Yeah. All right? Move, hey. move, move the ball. Move Don't the wait on it. Don't be too straight up. Let's go back and see the knockdown. All right, here's Tommy's painting. Beautiful. Followed in. And it was on the top of the head, Tim. Looked like a punch that almost missed. Right. That's the one that sent him to the canvas. But it was a clean right before that that really did the damage. Not the one that knocked him down. He was stunned. He tried to pretend that he wasn't hurt, but he was already shaken. Exactly what has happened. He's being active. That's the right hand you're talking about, Tim. They both threw right hands. Again, that was a chopping That's punch. That's the one. But Tommy knew he hurt him. You can see Ray here try to act like it didn't hurt him, and it wasn't much of a punch that sent him down. It was that one you saw a moment ago that did the damage. Round number four. There was also a little delay. That's right, Marvin. There was a little delayed reaction, a short chopping right from Hearns. I expect the Lily to come out now trying to act to show that he wasn't hurt at all and uh, try to take it back to Tommy. Hearns a little looser with the jazz now, the jab, a little more confident as you might expect. Well, his corner told Hearns to go out and fight him, and that's the only way to do it. Well, he was very successful using that left hand. I just keep using that left hand all night. Make Ray, Ray reach and then nail him when he reaches. Ray's having a lot of trouble getting any distance on Tommy up with his corner. And as long as they stay in long range, Hearns is going to score those points. He has to get inside that jab, start banging to the body. That's what he's looking for, the big hook. He's waiting for Tommy to jab so he can count. You have to take the confidence out of the eyes of Thomas Hearns because it's apparent right now Thomas Hearns believes he's the boss. And Tim, this is not the Thomas Hearns that we saw fight James Kitchen. That's no, he, for sure. He looks a lot more better today. He said he wasn't motivated against Kitchen. He certainly looks like a different fighter. There's that overhand right tried by Leonard. It grazed Hearns, and then Ray came back with a body attack. Hearns would have to keep the pressure on Leonard. So Tommy's starting to drop that left hand out on Marvin. Look where it is. That could be a bad mistake because Leonard's looking for that. Tommy should fight him, and that's the way to fight him. But Leonard knows he's got to fight him. And Richard Steele just warned Ray Leonard to keep him up. See, Leonard just can't get the proper distance. He's trying for the big knockout. He's looking for the chin. You know Tommy's got that weak chin there. Left hand blocked by Hearns. Handily with his right glove. Short right landed by Hearns. Now bangs to the arms of Tommy Hearns. And it lands a good body shot. And a good straight right hand. Tried to wing that overhand right again. <laughs> Hearns fires back, scores a right of his own. Misses badly with a right. That was the go-home punch, though, Tim. And he was able to get away with it. Now Hearns tying Leonard up for the first time in the bout.
Rotation by Hearns. No full impact with the right, but it did score. Leonard missing. You can see that Leonard's trying to build back up his confidence now. Well, Hearns now knows that Leonard's going to try to land that overhand right. He's seen it frequently. Final seconds of round four. A better fight to this point than many, many people expected. He has no, has no answer for the right hand. Do it off a jab. I want to see some jab in the hard right hand on top. Squat when you do it. Jab, squat, throw it over top. Then, Ray, when you come back the next time, hurt that body. Start hurting that body. I got to get those legs away from him. Got it? Move on to the body. You keep sliding, side to side. Going back into round number four, earlier in the round. That was that first amazing right hand that uh, just got Leonard's respect. Yeah, but it was on the end of the punch. Right, but it makes Planet think about it, though. Well, oh, he knows that he's in there with a fight now. Gil, what about Correa's instructions to Ray Leonard? Well, you know, he's telling him a lot of things, uh, Tim. Like, like maybe a little too much. You can tell the guy one thing, you know, you want to back the guy up or move him behind the jab. He's, he's uh, really telling him a little too much. He's worried. <laughs> Marvin Hagler says he's worried, and Leonard comes out with a charge. That means uh, Correa, the trainer in Leonard's corner. Round number five, scheduled for 12. And again, as long as Tommy can keep Ray out there, this is almost a duplicate of the first fight where Lynn is giving away all of the early rounds. Can't get inside, can't go to work. And he didn't go to work until he landed the one big punch on Tommy in the sixth round. We have scored the first four on our cards for Tommy Hearns, including a knockdown in round three and a close round yeah. four. There's that scoring jab of Hearns. Fourth round was a very, very close round. Lynn is looking for the big hook, though. And Tommy shoots the jab. And Tommy's dropping that left jab again. But he does it all the time, Gil. He's done it forever. I know he, you, you'd like to see him change it, but you know he won't. And he's got hit on the chin doing it. Yes, he has. And you notice how slow Lenny's jab is coming out. You notice that Ray just can't seem to reach him. He tries to he's throw it He's got to get closer. Him. He's got to get closer. Now is when Lenny should go to work. Right now is right when there. he should go to work. Short right landed inside by Hearn. Again, this is Hearns' territory, where they are right now. Right hand by Hearns, and a left hook drop Hearns. Leonard after him. Leonard, Hearns trying to tie him up, and he does. Combination by Leonard, rock Tommy Hearns, he's still wobbly. We're in the fifth. Well, you know right Another right hand on his chin. Tommy's fighting back. Right hand landed again by Leonard. Hearns covering up. Leonard trying to find an opening. Hearns fires back and misses. Now finally grabs on to Leonard. Tim Hearns is not out of it yet. No, he's not. Yes. Solid punches by Leonard. Leonard to the body. There right is. hand right down the pipe on another. Hearns in trouble. Hearns has got to fight back. He, he is fighting, fighting back. back. Left to the body back. and a right. He's got to get him back. Fight. He's got to be throwing punches right now. Right now. Hearns, punches. Hearns' legs a little shaky. Scored a right hand inside. Leonard may have tired himself. Spent a lot of energy, Tim. Yeah, missed a lot of punches. Under 30 seconds left in round five. A swinging left on the break. Scored by Leonard. Nice, a left nice scored by Hearns. Short with a right hand is Leonard. Hearns is dropping back and dropping his hands. Hearns trying to load up on the right after taking all of that punishment. Final seconds, round five. Jab by Leonard, not much on it. Hearns appears arm weary and still unsteady. In the round five. He's got a dance for the ground. He's tired now. This is what makes a great fighter. You understand? This is what makes a great fighter. This is what's going to make you great. You understand? Put your hands down. There's that left hook of, of Ray Lennon. It's the same one that hurt him in the first fight. 
Kept waiting for him to throw that left hook, and he nailed him with it. He got inside. Now he's close. He beat that, it to the punch. When he's close, that's when he can do his damage. And once he hurts you, he's a great finisher. The right and left combination. There's the right. The left wobbling. Hearns refused to go down and landed in the rope. Leonard attacking him, but Hearns surviving. One more look at it. Emmanuel Stewart screamed at Hearns when he got back. This is what makes a great fighter. The way he rallied in the fifth and telling him, obviously, to accept this challenge. And he also said that Leonard is out of gas. Spent a lot six. of energy last round. And he, uh, Emmanuel Stewart in the pre fight said, if Leonard can't get him out of there with his big punches, he's going to be in trouble. Two good jabs by Hearns early here in the sixth. The questionable legs of Hearns will be tested now. Well, Leonard's breathing still hard in this round. Leonard right looks tired right now, Tim. He's going to have to get a second win. And that's when Hurts will put the pressure on him right now. You gamble with him. You got to gamble. You're yeah. right, Marvin. And that's what they're screaming at Tommy from the corner. Get off. By right. him waiting and giving Leonard time to figure out a new plan. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, Gil Clancy. Nice. There's a good left by Hearns. You can hear the impact. Right hand blocked by Leonard. Leonard's waiting for that jab now. He's giving Leonard time to think. Well, anytime Leonard starts moving that head around, Tommy should go to the body. Just faint. <laughs> Leonard has become the puncher. He's not throwing enough punches to win the rounds. He's throwing punches to get Tommy out of there. But I think if he doesn't get him out of there, I think he's going to wind up blowing a decision because he just is not busy enough looking for the one big punch. There's that head moving. That's when Tommy should go right to the body. Anytime Ray moves that head in front of you. Good jab by Hearns. Good one back from Leonard. Both finding the range here in round six, but not throwing them in bunches. 33-year-old Sugar Ray Leonard, 30-year-old Thomas Hearns, into the sixth round scheduled for 12. A knockdown by Hearns in the third. A big round in the fifth for Leonard, who staggered it. Tommy Hearns. Leonard's looking for that one big punch against him. Now is wide open. Giving Leonard time to figure out a plan, and so Leonard's going to come up with a good combination. Leonard just missed with a right hand. Now Hearns is stalking Leonard, but he's not moving his hands. They should have been the hook right there. Tommy should throw the hook. Leonard's dropping his hands now, like he ain't hurting me. And Leonard ducked under a right hand from Hearns, but takes a left on the next exchange. Watch the fake. Well, I know, I know if I was in Tommy Hearns' corner, I have a faith in that jab and hook him to the body. What's he doing? Why is he standing there without punching? That's when Leonard gets off. How big a puncher is Sugar Ray Leonard now, Marvin, based on your fight record? Well, he couldn't punch me. He caught me with the best shots. Didn't really hurt me or stun me at all. That's the end of round number six. I think it's because of the weight difference. Not a big action round in the sense that I had, gentlemen, that perhaps they both were kind of playing, let's get a little rest here after a very vigorous fifth. Good. Here's Emmanuel Stewart in the Hearn squad. Might need a little grease walk. Well, Tommy's got to keep his composure. We come to fight this motherfucker tonight, man. This is it. You got your whole career on the line, and you can pull this out. You got to let the shots go, though. Can't let this You lean it in and let the man, he go. It's a long damage, he's going to land. But he caught you with the cleanup hook. He shot a one, two, missed you near that bam, and you didn't see the hook. You're letting him punch too damn much. You're letting him punch too much. Emmanuel Stewart wants more out of his fighter. Let your hands go. Punch more. Don't let Leonard punch so much. Well, I felt that way last round, Tim. Uh, uh, Tommy was stalking and stalking, but he wasn't moving his hands. He said, we came to fight this guy. Let's fight him. Round seven, a short right landed by Hearns. First exchange. What I noticed is when Leonard starts flurrying, he starts throwing punches. Hearns is standing there and cover up. Hearns picking up the pace. Bangs to the body. Leonard trying to block punches, but not punching back. Hearns driving him along the ropes, a combination. 
may have him in some trouble. Hard to tell right but now. But he's missing a lot of punches. Yes, Tim. he is. And in this heat, after one guy gets finished punching, then the other guy will come back. Well, he's taking a lot. Of, it takes a lot out of you when you miss those kind of punches. He's got to jump on him again. Crowd came to its feet, but he did not score heavily. We're in the seventh, scheduled for 12. A Again, dramatic Tommy, bout. Tommy has Ray out where he wants him. Sharp left from Ray to the body, a little bit low. That's where he wants to hit Tommy in the body. Good Tommy's got the left body. hook right here. There it is. So throw it again. Throw it again. This is where Tommy sits there, and that's how Ray gets off. Can't sit there. Left and right from Leonard. Short with a right, right hand back from Hearns at land. Shows that it looks like Len is a little weak right now, Tim. Got moved by that right hand. It wasn't that hard a punch. 90 degree temperatures here at Caesars Palace on a June night. More than 15,000. They've been up and down out of their seats for the action. I think the key to this punch for Hearns is that left hook. He should use the left hook a lot more. Through the body, Marvin. The body up to the head. That'll set the right, up, hand. right. That'll set up the other punches. Body and head to the right, straight right hand. Again, Don't now, play with him. Don't now, play Tom, with him. Tommy's not getting off enough right now. I can't play with him. He's hanging in there, dropping that hand down. Tommy is not using those hands enough. Using them to get around, not using them now. Look at Leonard's able to get the full range for him. He's going that right hand. He's got his head up. That's what I said what Tommy does. He folds in, tucks under, he stops punching. But Hearns missed two punches there that should have been target practice for him. Now he goes to the body and connects. Vicious body punches by Sugar Ray. Hearns jabbing back, but the body blows of Leonard now push Hearns away. Under 30 seconds to go round seven. Tommy looks tired. Well, Ray looked tired at the start of the round. Well, this is who's got the most endurance is going to win this fight. I don't think it's going to necessarily the punching power. Feigning, neither guy able to land. Wound up with Ray standing behind her. And he just stopped punching him. And in round number seven, difficult round to score. Remember early on that Hearns knocked Leonard all along the rope. Ray not punching back, and then Leonard came back well. Check him out here, Bruce. If the judges remember the beginning of the round, they give it to Hearns. Ray, Charles, baby, look. You were standing up too tall, number one. How did you okay. Now listen, you've got to get your body. Got to stick to the legs first. Go in, steal what you want, and move him around a little bit. Steal what you want and move around. Here's the early part of the round where Hearns was knocking Leonard all along the ropes, and Ray didn't really take any damaging blows, but he didn't punch back at all. So Hearns certainly got scoring points there, and there was... The best punch was that right you saw right there. Exactly. But Hearns got a nice left hook, and I don't know why he used it more. That you won't punch. No, you got to punch. Physical fighting. Forget the boxing. Fight the man. Oh, God. Now Emmanuel Stewart saying, fight the man. Physical boxing. We're into round number eight. Hearns and goal. Leonard in the stripes. Leonard can start reaching Hearns with that left jab, Tommy's going to be in a little trouble. He has to keep that jab going to keep Ray out where he wants him. I'm looking at Ray's left eye right now, too. One of them starting to look a little smaller than the other one. Maybe Tommy hit him in the eye a little bit. There's that piston jab. Not quite the same stinger speed it used to have, but it can still hurt you. And more importantly, it scores points right now, Tommy. into the eighth, the so-called over and under in Las Vegas betting circles. We're in the eighth round. Tommy can't hang on the ropes at all. He's got to stay in the center of the ring. That's he's, the key. He's not using his hands enough right now. He's not even using that left hook, and Tommy loves the left hook. He's got a beautiful left hook. Turns boxing. You heard Stewart say at the end of the round, go out and fight him. Then he's trying to take his confidence away from him. 70 cents he's been able to do that, Martin. I don't think he's taken the shot. 
Double hook. Double hook to the body, the hook to the head. Come back with the straight right hand. Ray is going to have to explode and explode on, soon. We're saying that Tommy's not punching much. Ray isn't exactly a ball fire in there. But this is where you give Ray that time. Right hand landed. Not full impact, but it did land. That's what I see in that More of those for Tommy. When Tommy is, is fighting offensively, he seems to have it all his own way. I don't know why he waits so long, but I think that's what Manny Stewart's talking about. Seems every time he starts to unload, he gets the best of it. Under a minute to go in round number eight. Turns forcing the attack. That's what he's got to do. Keep Linden's back against the rope. Yeah. Waiting, waiting a little too long to get off. We have Tommy Hearns ahead, having given him four rounds cleanly. We we'll wait for Tommy to pick up. Tommy's got to come right back. Ray looks like he's about ready to do something, but he just can't get past that left hand of Tommy's. Look how weak he looks right now, Ray. Hearns pushed him. What appeared to be a staggering punch was really from a push. It was a push, but Ray's legs didn't hold him very well. Final seconds of round eight. And they're asking Tommy, pleading with him to get off. Let him, let him go. Let the punches go. What are you doing? Who is that? You know how dirty Ray is. I don't believe that. Both of these guys were wide open and need the guy punched. Exactly. You know what? You know Until Ray Until after dirty. the bell. In the Ray Leonard corner. That is the same thing that happened in the first fight. Standing too straight up. Too tall, man. Ray, when you go to throw the right hand, do it off a jab to the belly. Then you can throw it on the top, man. I want you to go out and do it now. I need some body work, man. You're too straight up. Come on. down a little bit, okay? Oh, Let's start attacking both sides of that body. Run the shoulder. Okay. Let's not throw the bell. Pardon me? Let's not throw the bell. You all right? Okay, now all you got to do is throw punches. Well, so far, Gil Urquhart, Ray Leonard gets round five big when he wobbled Hearns. We gave him round six in a close one, and everything else we've given to Tommy Hearns, although he scored four and seven closely, and, of course, Hearns has a knockdown in round three. Right, I think Ray Leonard has a big mountain to climb right now, Tim. That's the way it looks on our card, into round nine. Notice that they're starting off very slow. Well, at the end of that last round, Bob, they both stood there looking at each other. Both guys had their hands down. Neither guy threw a punch. You can see Living hitting right in the chest now. You can yeah. see that jab is bothering Ray all the time. You know, Tommy Tommy's the one that hurt his eye in the first beginning. In the first fight. Right. You wonder whether or not he's still thinking the same thing. There was that left hook of Tommy Hearns. A little low, but that's what he has to do. Ray is throwing range finders out there now. Not so much on him. You know, Leonard's waiting to see what's going to happen, how tired he can make Tommy. Well, he's looking to land that one big punch, and he's been looking from the opening bell. The low blow from Leonard and gets a warning from Richard Steele. What do you know about the low blows? <laughs> you had a few of those, did you, Marvin? <laughs> or did you throw a few, or both? Oh, well, you know what happened. <laughs> right now, Sugar Ray Leonard looks like a puzzle fighter. He's standing straight up, which his corner told him not to do, and he just he's always out of the range when he's throwing those bombs he's trying to throw. He's trying to show Tommy that he's got bigger, I think, he's, that he can punch. Right punch hand faster. counter landed by Hearns. And Leonard landed the right hand too, Tim. Yeah, that was coming in. He scored first. But Hearns had a little more impact. Hearns just landed a good left hook to the body. And that's just what he should do more. He come back to the head with the hook. Short Tom, for that right. Tommy, but Tommy set it up beautifully that time. Tim. I think that punch there just hurt Tommy right to the ribs. I see the flinching. See him? Right here, he's flinching. He's spitting blood. And that's what Lynn is doing. He's attacking the body now. See, Ray is looking for that one big punch, though, Mark. And sometimes you can wait in the fight. There it is again. He's just out of range. You can be waiting and the fight's over. And you say, well, Frank never found it. He's got to be busy. The punch will come by itself. Stop. He has to stop putting it together. What's Tommy stop punching for? Why does he stop punching? And he's letting... He's letting uh, Ray back him up. And he knows Tommy gets in trouble when he backs up. There you go. That's what I'm looking for. And now coming back with a straight right hand. That one hurt Tommy. Short right scored by Leonard. Right and a left and a right. Hearns fires back, but Leonard had the better of it. 
Got to fire back. Well, this is when Ray, this is what Ray has to do. Come on, Tom. He can't fight from outside. Big right hand right by the hands. A good one right to the chin of Leonard. Didn't move him, but it was a good one. Him, dropped his right hand. Tommy dropped his right hand, and that, that was his downfall. Leonard trying to spring to the advantage of that left hand. Tommy's tired. Final seconds of round nine. And Tommy doesn't have a leg under him right now. One good solid punch. He's gone down. Leonard checked him out, going back to the corner. You gotta listen to me real good. Well, this will maybe be the last round of the fight, Tommy. You got to come out and let your big shots go. You cannot afford to make this fight go longer now. You understand? You got to listen to me very tough. You got to come out and let your shots go. Try to get this man out of here this round, okay? He's getting in the clutch. That's what you There's the left hook that staggered Tommy Hearns. Blocked the next two, but he was still wobbly, and there came the right. Leonard working inside, then brought up that left. Watch for the right hand. Well, he followed with the right hand after Hearns covered up. So we're into round 10. There's Roberto Duran working the Spanish telecast, Spanish-speaking telecast tonight. The WBC middleweight champion with a remarkable win over Iran Barkley. Talked about as the next opponent for the winner here. All right, Ray feels that he heard him in the last round. Tim, he's right on him. And this is where Tommy doesn't belong. Right. On the ropes, allowing Leonard to get within punching range, which is what he's doing. And he's not punching. Right there. Leonard's right in front of him, and he's not getting off. Now, now Leonard has the distance. Right, right, right. Hearns is letting him have the distance. Leonard's jab starting to take effect. Well, because he's getting a little closer. Tommy's not pumping that jab anymore. And the Hearns legs don't look so good. A left to the neck from Leonard. You heard Emmanuel Stewart saying to Hearns, you've got to fight. You've got to go get him. Exactly. Tim, Leonard started to put, it, to put his punches together. That's what he has to do. Get close enough. Just keep those hands moving. The big punch comes all by itself. Tommy looks sloppy every time he backs up. Legs aren't there anymore, Marv. Maybe the fact that he had to make that 163 and a half pounds, maybe not. But the legs aren't there. I don't know why he's not firing that right hand a lot more. That's, even if he misses it, he'll keep way back a little bit. See, this one, this one, Tommy looks good when he's coming forward. And when he's sticking that left keeping hand, that left side. keeping Ray away from him. He has to move and keep him away. Now number 10, scheduled for 12. Shook Ray a little bit from the top of the head with that and let him go. He's letting him go. He's letting him have his way in there. What you waiting? Wait. I don't know what he's waiting for. If he's not doing anything else, he should be pumping that jab. Exactly. Ray's going to try to come over the top with the right hand now. Not doing anything else. Double the jab. Pump the jab. Hearns has got to wake up now. He's got to get that second win and start waking up and letting Ray know that he's not tired. Ray missed with a right, a short chopper back landed by Hearns. Under a minute. A little blood coming from either the mouth or nose this of Hearns. This is the cheek of Hearns. Down a right missed. A little cut under the left eye of Thomas Hearns. That's Insignificant. The Insignificant. No damage there. No serious uh, problem. Nice. Good, solid left for Thomas Hearns. We finally get that little energy that snapped up. And that's what he's got to do. He's got to show when that he's got the snap. When up. he has Ray punching from outside the way he is now, he's in command. It's only when he slows down and allows Ray to get inside. Well, you know, Ray knows how to go to distance. And I think that's what's going to be the advantage in this fight right now. Early part of the round, you'd have to score for Leonard, but Hearn's coming back here now in the later seconds. Down to 15 in round 10. There you Short right inside by Hearns. Counter back to the body. Hearns misses with a right. Hearns has got to go forward. Lands a left. Final seconds of the pit as Leonard scores. Right hand, Tommy. That's gonna take you home. 
Eleventh round know. coming up. The eleventh round, you don't want the fight, let it go. Thomas, listen to me. Jab right hand, left hook. I want that right hand straight to the forehead. You come back with the left with hook. The you can knock him out with a jab, straight hand, left hook. But the straight right hand has to hit him in the forehead. Come back with right the hand. Gone, but I want Bring it down a little hand. bit. Okay? All right, Jake. All right. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Let's go now. Six minutes. Six minutes. All right. We got six, six minutes. Okay. Let's do it. Let's go. We got six. Round 11 upcoming. We have given Ray Leonard two cleanly, two close ones. It could be scored either way. The rest of it to Hearns, and Leonard comes charging across. Richard Steele cut him off as right, now Hearns was not out of his corner. Let's see if, if, if Tommy allows Ray to get within punching range. It's almost like allowing. He doesn't have to allow. He can pump that jab. Give it a little blow. He should take a start taking a point from Ray when Ray is like that. There's that overhead right. Trying to land a haymaker and missed it again. But as long as he can get away with it, tends to throw it four times and miss and land the fifth, it's okay. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy's not counting back. Tommy's got to stay in the middle of the ring. Short uppercut, but a good left back from Leonard. You see, Tommy seems to be waking up right now, right then. Tim Ryan with Marvin Hagler, Gil Clancy in round 11 of the scheduled 12 round championship bout. Turns Leonard two. Hey. There's a right by her. Big right hand by Tommy Hearns. Another one, another one. Here goes Leonard with a combination from her. Leonard looks hurt, gets up, but he is hurting. Tim, I think that his eyes are clear. He may be hurt a little bit, but his eyes are clear. Hearns after him, a left to the body. Leonard firing back. Down twice in this fight. A short right by Leonard. Well, believe me, Leonard's in this fight. That's a Leonard short right by Hearns. Iris Hearns, I'd still use that left jab. Keep pumping that jab. The other punches will come. We just got to make sure Leonard don't get that rest. Gotta, you got to use it. There you go. Hearns counters with a right. Leonard tied him up. Well, both of these guys are showing all the championship heart in the world, though. More than anybody expected tonight. The kind of action they've been able to generate. Their hearts were never in doubt. But the ability they've shown here to struggle into the 11th round firing bombs has really been remarkable. I don't think Tommy needs that right hand business anymore. I think all he needs to do now is pump his, pump his jab and coast home. Well, he's got two knockdowns on the scorecard, too. We've got him ahead handily. And look at Ray bang him Ray back. Ray bangs him back a good left hook. Big mistake to count Ray Leonard out of this fight. Counting him out, you know. <laughs> I'm just pointing out the score. What Ray's doing is he can't possibly. He's got it. He's doing what Tommy should be doing. Under 30 seconds to go in the 11th round. This is a 12-round fight. There's a right hand by Leonard. Right, right, right hand right. shot from Leonard. He and bangs inside. Let him, Tommy lets him go. Lets him have it. And Tommy's a little tired. Tommy shouldn't be backing up. Right hand by Hearns grazed the chin of Leonard, but he punched right back. End of round number 11. Let's see that knockdown. A right. That hurt him, little delay, missed with a left. I believe it was the left hook. That There's another right there. hand and a left hook and a right behind that. And three punches, cumulative effect, sending Leonard down. All right, take another look at it. There's the first right hand, that wobbled him. Missed the other one. Missed the hook to the body. And then there's another good right hand, left hook. And the final right hand, and down he goes. You can do it. Gentlemen, uh, it's safe to say the way we have it, Sugar Ray Leonard needs a knockout in this final round to win the fight. Absolutely. He's been down twice in the fight. It's the point system. If I was in Tommy Hearns' corner, I'd say pump that jib, pump that jib. Don't let this guy close to you. Don't let, don't let Leonard be too nice to you in there right now. Right. And you don't have to take any chances. No, when he tried it, Marvin, he smiled. He uh, smiled. I said, come on, we're friends. All right. All right, what? <laughs> Hearns after him. Now Hearns 
busy here early in round well, 12. That's something he doesn't have to do. Well, he is a gallant guy trying to put him away. Look at Hearns wail away. He scored two knockdowns already. May not have to do it, but there's so much pride at stake. Both of these guys gritting, gritting their teeth, giving it their all. Tommy Hearns wants this so badly. Sugar Ray Leonard, of course, one of the proudest champions ever, will not concede anything. Did you notice the way Hearns... Right hand by Leonard. Both guys landed right hands, Tim. Hearns is waiting to get back in. Another right hand, backing Leonard into Hearns into the rope. Ray Leonard. You gotta fight him back. And here's what Tommy didn't know how to do in the first fight. Hold on. And walk him out of there. Leonard's trying to push him to the rope so he can bang him. Referee supposed to break him. Leonard did not break that time. He's slick. Mark, you know that. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Here we go. Come on, Tommy. Leonard rallying. Backs up yep. Hearns again, but Hearns fires back. But like you said, Tommy's getting the last monitor. But Tommy's right on the ropes now where he shouldn't be. Left hook landed by Leonard. And Tommy has nothing left. Leonard in desperation now trying to put he his hand to away. Watch the clock now, Tim. Tommy has nothing left. Right hand by Leonard and Hearns in difficulty along the ropes. Another combination. Punching back, but he's wide open. Leonard firing away. Could we see a replay of 1981? Well, but here's Tommy Hearns holding on. That's That's look smart. at that clock going around. That's, That's what he smart. couldn't do in the first fight. Exactly. Under a minute to go. Wild right hand by Leonard. Landed on the back of Hearns. Hearns wobbly legged, but holding on as you point out something he and may have right in trying to in walk in. That's what Tommy gets in trouble. He's, that's but what he's doing better. He like knows enough says. to hold though, Marvin, he's which he did not know how to do before. So he's backing up on that rope again, and that's where Leonard wants you so he can throw. Punch, to punch back. Leonard giving it everything, and Hearns trying to punch back. Not much sting in his punches. Staggering around the ring. Under 30 seconds we go. That was the big left hook by Leonard. See, yeah, Leonard knows the last 30 seconds. Leonard to the body and now up to the head. Hearns punching back with no effect. Well, Leonard's a little tired now. Yes, he and is. Tried yeah. to break him. There should be a point taken away Leonard right there. Leonard punching on the breaker right hand lead score. There can no longer be a knockout staggering. in the fight. There cannot Final be a knockout, Tim. Final seconds with Hearns still on his feet. The crowd is on its feet. What a war! What a fight! Very good fight. I believe Tommy won it. Well, on our scorecard, we can't change our mind, Mob. We said before the last round that Ray Leonard needed a knockout to win. He exactly. didn't get it. He batted Tommy all over the place, did not get the knockout. Hearns scored two knockouts in the fight. They're on the point system. Two knockdowns in the fight. They're on the point system. I'd have to score it for Tommy Hearns. I would agree. We've got Hearns the winner, but we'll see how the officials see it. The judges here tonight are Tommy Kazmarek from New Jersey, Dalby Shirley, Jerry Roth from Las Vegas. A tremendous battle, no matter which way the judges see it. We certainly have Hearns, the winner. He scored knockdowns in round three and round 11. Ray Leonard's biggest round, the fifth, and then in the 12th, a tremendous rally against the tired Tommy Hearns. Marvin, you know, I owe Tommy Hearns an apology. After the Kinchin fight, I said on the air, Tommy, what do you need it for anymore? You should retire. You have all the money you want. You were down. You were hurt badly. Retire, Tommy. And did he show me? I said he didn't have any legs anymore. Didn't have a good chin, but he sure proved it tonight. He did. He uh, fought an excellent fight, I felt. You know, it's, like, Here, again, two Here's champions. the punch stat. Leonard landed 232 punches. Tommy, 221. T Hearns was more accurate with 40%. But Hearns scored those two big knockdowns, knockdowns. And that should be the difference in the fight. Exactly. See, I'm trying to tell you that Leonard's not moving as much. He put that little bulk on him. And uh, that's that's going to be a big bad thing for him. See, another thing, Marv, Leonard's strategy all during his training was to throw every punch like a bomb and hurt the other guy, and he forgot to put his punches together. That's what got him here. The big punch comes all by itself. I told Bob Arum, maybe $20 million to do it for me. <laughs> but let's go up to Michael Buffer. Jerry Roth scores the bout. 113 to 112 for Thomas Hearns. Tommy Kazmarek scores it. 
113 to 112 for Sugar Ray Leonard. And Dolby Shirley scores the bout. 112, 112. This bout is a draw, ladies and gentlemen. The bout is a draw. The bout is a draw. Let's get both boxers here. Tommy Hearns. Everybody, everybody calm down, guys. Let's get Tommy Hearns over here. Tommy. Tommy Hearns. Manuel Stewart. Ray Leonard. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I gotta, I've got to tell you guys both that Marvin Hagler, Gil Clancy, and I had this fight scored for Tommy Hearns primarily on the basis of the two knockdowns. Let's get Tommy's reaction to the decision first, the draw. Tommy, what are your thoughts? Uh, I thought I uh, won the earlier rounds, um, but Ray was able to come back. Um, I can't uh, say nothing negative about Ray. It's a, a great fight, I gotta give him a spot. But would you expect with two knockdowns to get only a draw? Well, I was hoping for a win, but you know how that is. Well, the crowd is registering their unhappiness. Ray Leonard, I, I got to put it to you this way. Do you feel lucky to get a draw? No, I don't. It was a close fight. I thought the fact that uh, those two knockdowns work uh, was an edge. But I was able to come back in uh, with middle rounds and late rounds. Again, those uh, knockdowns like 10 8 rounds. After I came back strong enough in uh, the times I did rock Tommy. That, uh, to get two point rounds. Yeah, exactly. Did you, did you expect this kind of a fight? Well, I always expect tough fights, so no matter what you guys be saying. Twelve rounds? Everyone said that Tommy was, uh, was a shot fighter, and uh, the fact of the matter was, he showed what he's made of. Well, you said he was a shot fighter, too. Don't win it, too. Don't win it. <laughs> Come here, Tommy. Tommy, you don't seem terribly disappointed by this draw. Well, this was something you wanted so I, badly. I, I, I feel grateful for it because I worked hard for it. I thought I wanted to fight, but, you know, that's uh, up to the judges. And I can't um, argue with the judges. I'm, I'm proud to have a draw instead of a loss of a record. You are a gallant warrior. You both are. You both gave everything. You gave more than anybody expected you could possibly produce in this fight. I congratulate you both. No matter what the decision is, as I said, we saw it for Tommy Hearns. But nonetheless, a great, great battle. How about a rematch? Go home this time. I'm thinking about you all the time, but I can think about a woman sometimes now. A rematch, Ray? Have you had enough of this guy or not? Well, I think we'd both exhaust it. Are you, are you talking rematch, Tommy? Uh, if you want, yes. We, let's, let's go home and rest for a while. I boy. think we should go home and think about it and then come back and make a decision. But right now, we're too tired to say what we want to do. <laughs> That's fair I, enough. I want to speak for myself. I don't know about him. That's fair enough. You've been through a tremendous emotional burden, Tommy. You showed you dealt with it fantastically tonight. Congratulations to you again, Ray. A, a fantastic comeback. You got yourself a draw. And there you have them, two great champions who have put on an unbelievable show here at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard going the distance of 12 for a draw. Now let's return you from the chaos in ringside to Jim Hill and Al Bernstein. Okay, Tim, thank you very much. Absolutely incredible. I don't think anyone that watched the fight or thought about it beforehand, Al, thought that it would go the distance. And I know you yourself, you thought that Tommy won it. Yes, of all the scenarios, though, a draw was the least likely, even if it would go to a decision. I thought Tommy won the fight on the basis of two things that Gil and Lars talked about. The early, the early rounds he won and the two knockdowns, which would make those two-point rounds. But I think the key element, we talked a little bit about it before the fight, and of course, Gil and Marv talked about it during the fight. Tommy Hearns could have won this fight had he used the left hook to the body and the head a lot more. It was there for him. It's a punch he has used against every other opponent, but never against Sugar Ray Leonard. And it cost him dearly tonight. Why hasn't he ever used Why wouldn't he use it as often as he should? I don't left? know. And he saw he, it could work in that, in that fight. In the middle rounds where he hurt Ray. Remember where he hurt him mm -hmm. with that left hook? I think that really, really hurt him. Ray Leonard, as it was, he was against the Lund, uh, wasn't throwing as many punches as we've seen the Ray Leonard of the past throw, which is why I think most of us thought Tommy might have uh, had a decision victory. Clearly, both fighters were slower than they have been in the past. 
but both men were able to hit the other, creating a really exciting fight, and both men have terrific firepower. Let no one say anything about the chin of Tommy Hearns anymore. I was just getting ready to add to, add to that. You know, going into the fight, everyone had said that Tommy Hearns could no longer take a punch. They talked about his legs. They said that his legs were shot. It was just the opposite, even though there were times throughout the course yes. of the fight when he was quite wobbly. He was hurt, and Sugar Ray Leonard came in and did exactly what he needed to do, rip those double left hooks to the body and the head, but he couldn't get Tommy out of there. And uh, this one will, uh, you think there'll be some debates over the next month oh, or so? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> without a doubt. One of the things that's quite surprising to me is the manner in which Tommy took the draw. Yeah, astonishing to me, considering the long wait. But I'll tell you, uh, my theory on that is he, re he feels he redeemed himself by simply fighting all the way with Leonard, proving that he was as good a man as Leonard, certainly in a very close fight. And I think that gave Tommy Hearns peace of mind, Jim, and that was what this was all about, apparently. And every place that he goes, people will tell him, we know you want it. Talking they about may, Tommy. They may well, that's for sure. Well, whoever called this fight a war should be <laughs> given a gold medal themselves because that's exactly what it was. An absolute war between Thomas Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard. Okay, let's talk about talk about gold medals. Let's talk about what happened in the undercard today. Well, the, for the Olympians, Michael Carbajal winning in the four rounds in a tough decision. Kennedy McKinney got all that he could want in winning a decision over David Marino. And then Robert Wayne Gila stunned, winning a majority of decision in his fight. Andrew Maynard with a one-round knockout. And uh, Ray Mercer, the Olympic gold medalist in the heavyweight division, just knocked Ken Crosby sideways in winning his fight in the first round. So the Olympians came through, some with flying colors, some not. One quick question, though. What does this do down the road? I wonder what Roberto Duran is thinking right now. Well, you know, I'll tell you something. Roberto Duran looked quicker in his fight with Iran Barkley than these guys did. More hand speed and better combinations. I don't know if that means he'll beat either one of these guys, but first we have to see what they decide to do. Do you think that the public will want another uh, another rematch? But that, that is problematical. I don't know, and I think even both men were wondering about that, but it was exciting. Uh, Absolutely <laughs> unforgettable evening. Absolutely amazing. Let's go back downstairs right now and get some final comments. Let's go once again to Tim Ryan. Tim? <laughs> All right, Jim. It was an unbelievable evening indeed, and I think the scorecard is very interesting indeed. There was a lot of discussion in the years following the first fight about whether or not there should be more 10-8 rounds in rounds that don't have knockdowns in them. Tonight... In the two knockdown rounds scored by Hearns, all three judges scored them 10-8 rounds, as one would expect. But, however, in the 12th round and in the 5th uh, uh, round for Ray, there were 10-8 rounds scored. In the 5th, all judges scored 10-8 rounds. And in the 12th, Dalby surely gave Ray Leonard a 10-8 round. Your comments, Gil? Well, I think that uh, the 12th round should have been a 10-8 round for Leonard. The two knockdowns certainly should have been 10-8, maybe 10-7 for Tommy Hearns. And the other, the other round, the fifth round, should have been a 10-9 round. <coughs> well, and yet all three judges saw the fifth round 10-8 for yeah. Leonard. So we've got the kind of controversy that boxing's used to. I was stunned, Marvin Hagler, that, that Tommy Hearns did not take this harder for well, something that has meant so much to him. What do you, you think know, of that? Especially when you fight a guy like a Sugar Ray Leonard, you've got to realize you've got to knock him out. You know, and let's be honest with you. I felt as though that Tommy did edge the fight. Those two knockdowns should have been in a big favor of Tommy Hearns. Well, nonetheless, Tommy Hearns seemed at the end to be not all that upset. He had given everything he had. So did Ray Leonard. That's what we've come to expect of these two boxers over the years. They certainly did not disappoint. While the skills may not be there, while the hand speed that Al Bernstein referred to may not be there, the hearts are as big as ever, Gil. Well, hearts, championship hearts, no question about it. Two great, great fighters. Is I thought this though they showed a lot of uh, championship quality. Marvin, should there be a Hearns Leonard three? You know that's what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> they no, don't want me in there. I disagree. <laughs> I think these guys have had enough of each other. I think they respect each other. I don't think we'll see a Leonard Hearns three. Marvin Hagler, what about you? Uh, you got a place in the picture. I'm going to movies. They don't got enough money for me. No interest in coming back, seriously? Oh, no. 20 million I mentioned, but then. Uh, 20 million no. would Mike get you. I think I can still get back to do better than that. Come on. But no, I think the movie's for me. The movies are for Marvin Hagler. <laughs> Maybe the boxing rings are still for Hearns and Leonard. We'll find out. It was called a war. There's oftentimes labels that appear as on edge by his own account. You know, he knows that he is going into this fight for the first time in his career as perhaps the less confident gladiator. I talked to a couple of his people just a few moments ago, and they said Sugar Ray Leonard has the same frame of mind as he had against Tommy Hearns.